Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to start a new series on the HPE Proliant DL360 Gen 11 server. In this video, we're going to specifically focus on processors, but in the video series as a whole, we're going to cover processors, drives, network cards, RAID, supported operating systems, plus a bunch more. So click that like, smash that subscribe. Let's get going. All right, thanks for stopping by to learn a little bit more about the HPE Proliant DL360 Gen 11 server. Let's just hop in. So here's what we're doing in this video. So we're gonna go over just the general information regarding the processor. We're gonna go over the CPUs that we recommend. People ask us all the time, you know, which ones do you recommend? So we'll put up uh, a chart. Uh, and then we're gonna show you how to actually physically do an install. So yeah, we're gonna cover a lot. So let's just get into all the fun stuff. All right, so this is a dual socket system using LGA4677 sockets, which means that takes Intel Xeon scalable 4th and 5th gen processors. Unfortunately, no, the 1st, 2nd, 3rd gen scalable processors are not backwards compatible. You can't throw them in here. Uh, they're different socket types, so you will be using the 4th and 5th gen scalable Intel procs, and you can max out using 128 cores total, putting in 264 cores. So yes, you can get a lot of processing power out of this box. So let's hop into the CPUs that we recommend. So as I mentioned, people ask us all the time, hey, what CPUs do you recommend? And really that constantly changes, right? That depends on one, first, what application are you using it for, what's your budget, and then two, uh, HPE is doing different specials at different times, and we're one of their partners, so depending on uh, what specials are coming out, we might you know, recommend uh, one processor over another. Uh, sometimes even a better processor will be cheaper than a different processor, so we'll you know, change it up depending on the specials of the day, right? But uh, that being said, uh, as far as some of the stuff we like right now, we break it down into three categories. We have our low end, our value, and our high end. The low one is going to be uh, processors that are you know, budget friendly. They're not going to you know, break the bank by any means, but they're going to be uh, lower specs, right? Uh, but they're very suitable for a ton of applications out there. So uh, that's the low end stuff that we will recommend. And those are all, as you can see on our list, those are uh, silver fourth gen scalable. Uh, so those are all, again, really great procs. Then in the value side, we move up to fourth gen gold, all three uh, processors. And these are, again, uh, not going to break the bank, but they're going to be good value procs as a whole. So they're just, you know, great specs, better than low end, uh, but they're not going to be the, the highest end. Uh, again, value is just a nice little sweet spot. And then on the high end, we go to platinum and all the ones that we're putting up here are fifth gen platinum. Uh, and you can see by throwing two of these in, you get 264 cores and that's where you get to the 128 cores where you can make this a very, very beefy one U for you. Uh, so that being said, uh, there's some great options there. And again, it constantly changes. So if you are looking for a gen 11 server right Right now and you're trying to figure out, hey, you know, what should I build? Which, you know, which one should I put in? Call us. We'd love the opportunity to help you and quote you on your build. Uh, email us at sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales at cloudninjas.com. All right, so now that we know a little bit more, let's show you how to do the install. But before we do, I'm going to grab my ESD gear. Be right back. All right, so the things we're going to need, your CPU that you're going to be installing, some thermal paste to put on top of your CPU, a clean rag to wipe off your old heat sink, and a T30-bit screwdriver that's going to be to remove your heat sink and install the heat sink again. Now that we have all those things so we can start our install, let's go ahead and put everything to the side and lift open the top like we normally do. So as you can see, there's two CPUs on the motherboard, CPU1 and CPU2. We're going to need to start by unscrewing the heat sinks with our T30-bit screwdriver. So you'll notice that I am using a manual screwdriver as opposed to an electric screwdriver. And don't get me wrong, when we have to bang out you know, 100, 200 servers in a day, we're kind of forced to use the electric screwdrivers just to get through everything quickly. But I'm a big fan of the manual screwdriver just so you don't strip the screws. And you also get a really good feel for when the heat sink actually comes off of the motherboard. You just Basically everything about it, you can just feel a lot more uh, closer to the machine. Once you have successfully unscrewed the heat sink from the motherboard, you're going to see these clips. The two clips you're going to want to push inwards towards the center and then lift up the heat sink at the same time. And when you do this, you will successfully detach the heat sink and the CPU from the motherboard. Now, if you look at the bracket around the CPU, you're going to see this latch right here. You want to turn that latch up safely to remove the CPU from the heat sink, and then you can take the CPU and slide it off of the bracket. Once you've done that, you've successfully detached the processor from the heatsink in the bracket, and you can start cleaning the old thermal or old heatsink. 
So now we're going to grab a clean rag and start cleaning all this old messy thermal paste off of our CPU, our heatsink, and the bracket. Really the CPU you can do later depending on if you're you know reusing it or not, but the heatsink you're going to need to use right now. So you definitely want to get all this old thermal paste cleaned off and get the bracket all cleaned up. And it's definitely important to note when you're doing this, do not do it over the open exposed CPU pins. Don't do it over your motherboard. Do it to the side of the server. You don't want any old thermal paste flaking off and landing in the CPU pins. That would be the absolute worst scenario. So now that we've cleaned off our old CPU, we'll go ahead and clean the heat sink and bracket. We're not going to do it over the open exposed pins, not over the open exposed server. Just again, going to do it to the side, just like we did with the CPU. It could also land in a bunch of other open exposed things in the server. So do it to the side. Uh, just take that extra second and make sure that you don't clean it on top of the system because if the stuff falls in there, you can definitely damage your server. And instead of doing an upgrade, you end up having to replace a motherboard, something you definitely don't want. And now that we've got everything nice and clean, we're good to reuse our heatsink and reuse our bracket. We're going to take these clips here that are holding the bracket to the heatsink, and we're going to gently just bend them back and push the bracket up, and this will easily come off. And easily is a, a stretch, but it'll come off with a little bit of work. And now that we've uh, finished cleaning what little thermal place was left on the heatsink, we're going to clean the sides of the brackets again and just make sure that everything is all good so that we're able to reuse it. So now you can reattach the bracket to the heatsink. Make sure that you line up the triangle on the bracket to the side of the heatsink that also has that same triangle. Basically, that triangle you're going to see over and over and over again. It's on the motherboard, it's on the heatsink, it's on the bracket. This is really important because this is what's going to help you line up your CPU in the right place. Now we're going to go ahead and add in our new thermal paste. Make sure you don't put on too much thermal paste, but you also put on enough. It's a nice little balance that you really need. If you have too much, then it's going to basically squirt over the edges and you don't want it to potentially get into your motherboard or all over the sides of anything so that when you're removing it later it's flaking off and falling but you do need enough that you keep the CPU cool so all right so now we can go ahead and slide our new processor onto the heat sink make sure that you again have the triangle lined up the same thing we talked about earlier it's on the CPU it's on the heat sink it's on the brackets on the motherboard this is going to keep you uh, making sure that everything is lined up properly uh, make sure you hold the clips properly and firmly to the processor and make sure that you hear the clicks as well to let you know that the CPU is installed into the bracket. It's that simple. So now we're going to place our heat sink with the new CPU onto the socket and screw it back in. Make sure that where it says front of the server is porting towards the front. If you don't see that on the heat sink, then make sure that you're lining up the triangle. Again, that triangle is going to be super helpful just to make sure that everything is lined up properly. Now all that's left is just screw your heat sink back onto the motherboard. We did it. We have successfully installed a new CPU into our server. Hey, thanks for stopping by. If you're looking for any custom built servers, upgrades, if you're looking for any spare parts, we'd love the opportunity to earn your data center's business. Please email us at sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales at cloudninjas.com. Thanks for stopping by, guys. Take care. Thank <laughs> you.